Hello and welcome to Law Excellence IAS Academy's unique initiative Current Affairs for Beginners. Dear students, due to some reasons we failed to deliver you the videos of 19th, 21st, 22nd and 23rd January. But we'll make sure that all the important topics that have appeared in these 4 days Hindu newspaper by covering them in our further videos. Now let's start our today's session. These are all the topics that we are going to cover in our today's video. First, we'll see hearing on CBI chief appointment process today. This article comes under GS paper two under the topic of polity, and here the subtopic is appointment to various constitutional posts, powers, functions, and responsibilities of various constitutional bodies, statutory, regulatory, and various quasi-judicial bodies. From this article, now we are going to see about the appointment process. for appointing the cbi chief the appointment process of cbi director has seen several changes over the years currently the appointment is carried out as per the lokpal act of 2014 by a committee that is headed by the prime minister we know that cbi is headed by a director who is an ips officer of the rank of director general of police the appointment process of the cbi chief has gone through several changes over the years before lokpal act was enacted in 2014 the appointment was made on the basis of delhi special police establishment act of 1946 this act was revised in 2003 based on the supreme court's recommendation in order to make the appointment process of the agency's director transparent under this delhi special police establishment act the central government has formed a commission that was headed by the chief vigilance commissioner this committee had members from cvc that is the central vigilance commission secretaries from home ministry ministry of personnel and public grievances this committee you will send its recommendations to the central government which will then appoint the cbi director however after the lokpal act came into force in 2014 the appointment process has underwent a change the lokpal act of 2014 has provided for an empowered committee for the appointment of the cbi chief this committee was headed by the prime minister and it has the leader of opposition as its member it also has the chief justice of india or a supreme court judge whoever is recommended by the chief justice of india as its member the process of appointing the cbi director will begin in the home ministry which prepares the list of ips officers eligible for the post and this list will be sent to the department of personnel and training this department of personnel and training will prepare the final list based on seniority integrity and experience in the investigation of anti corruption cases this list will then go to the committee that is headed by the prime minister based on whose recommendations the government will appoint the director of cbi the next article is cabinet decides to strengthen northeast autonomous councils this article comes under gs paper 2 under the topic of indian constitutions the subtopic is historical underpinnings evolution features amendments significant provisions and the basic structure in this article from the prelims point of view we are going to see about the 6th schedule of the constitution the constitution of india has made special provisions for the administration of tribal dominated areas in four states they are assam meghalaya tripura and mizoram as per article 244 and sixth schedule of the indian constitution these areas are called as tribal areas which are different from 
the scheduled areas that come under fifth schedule of the constitution the major differences are though both the areas under fifth schedule and the sixth schedule have dominance of tribal people constitution calls them with different names that is scheduled area under fifth schedule while tribal areas under sixth schedule the executive powers of the union will extend into this fifth schedule with respect to their administration here whereas the sixth schedule areas will remain within the executive authority of the state and this fifth schedule has provided for the creation of tribal advisory council whereas the sixth schedule provides for district councils and regional councils with certain judicial legislative and financial powers now let us see about this autonomous districts and autonomous regions governors of the four states that is assam mizoram meghalaya and tripura are empowered to declare some tribal dominated districts or areas of these four states as autonomous districts and autonomous regions in order to do this there is no need of a separate legislation there is no need of passing any law the governor also has a power to reorganize these areas that means he can include any other area or exclude any area increase decrease diminish these areas or unite two districts or alter the names and boundaries of these autonomous districts and regions now let us see the creation of this district councils and regional councils article 244 provides for the creation of this autonomous district councils whereas article 275 provides for the creation of regional councils currently these are the 10 district councils in meghalaya mizoram tripura and assam then what is the advantage of including these states or these areas in the sixth schedule the entry into the sixth schedule will give autonomy to the people in these areas for self governing through some features like as we said that these councils will be provided with certain powers for example legislative power this is used to make laws on certain matters like land forest canal water shifting cultivation village administration inheritance of property marriage divorce social customs all this whereas when it comes to the judicial power of these councils these councils can constitute village councils or courts for trial of suits and cases between the tribes the jurisdiction of high courts over these cases will be specified by the governor and they were also having some regulatory powers the district council can establish construct or manage primary schools dispensaries markets fisheries roads in the district it can also make regulations for the control of money lending and trading by non tribals but all these regulations require the assent of governor and next the financial powers the district and regional councils were empowered to levy and collect land revenue and they were also empowered to impose some specified taxes and the last one is both the parliament and state legislatures were having limited powers over these autonomous regions because the acts of parliament or state legislature will not be applied to these autonomous districts and autonomous regions if applied that too with some specified modifications as recommended by the district council and with some exceptions 
as these councils under the sixth schedule were given more power than the local governments that is the panchayat raj and the municipal bodies under 73rd and 74th amendment in the rest of the country as i said the state legislature and the parliament will have limited powers especially in assam tripura and mizoram these autonomous councils were having power to decide if a state legislation on subject matters under these autonomous councils like water land should apply to their territories or not it will be decided by the autonomous councils now this article speaks about there are going to be some amendments to these autonomous councils the government is planning to increase the financial and executive powers of these 10 autonomous councils these decisions are going to amend the article 280 which deals with the finance commission here the finance commission now will be it will become mandatory for the finance commission to recommend the devolution of financial resources to these councils which is not its function till now so that it will bring an amendment to this article 280 of the constitution and these proposed amendments are going to create elected village councils in all the areas they are going to provide for elected village councils and it is going to ensure the inclusion of women in these village councils by providing them at least one third of the seats and this amendment is going to ensure there will be a regular elections conducted by the state election commissions the next article is an electoral intervention that has clicked this article comes under gs paper 2 under the topic of polity and the sub topic here is functions and responsibilities of various constitutional bodies and here it is the election commission from the prelims point of view from this article now we are going to see about this voter verifiable paper audit trial machines what are this voter verifiable paper audit trial machines it is a method that will provide feedback to the voters it is an independent verification printer machine verification printer machine and it is attached to the electronic voting machines so that it will allow the voters to verify if their vote has gone to the intended candidate how do these machines work when a voter presses a button in the electronic voting machine a paper slip will be printed through this voter verifiable paper audit trial machine this slip will contain the poll symbol and name of the candidate and it will allow the voter to verify whether his or her vote has gone to their choice after being visible to the voter from a glass case for 7 seconds the ballot slip will cut and will be dropped into the drop box in this machine and a beep will be heard these machines can be accessed by polling officers only if we say what is the significance of these machines the usage of these machines by the election commission is expected to ensure free and fair election because as these machines are regarded as an independent verification system because they will allow the voter to verify that their votes are casted correctly and it will detect possible election fraud or malfunction and it will provide a means to audit the stored electronic results The next article is a reckless experiment. This article comes under GS Paper Three under the topic of science and technology. From this article, now we are going to see about a concept known as gene editing and what is this CRISPR Cas9 editing system. Gene editing, or also known as genome editing, it is a way of making specific changes. to the dna of a cell or an organism an enzyme which is known as engineered nucleases or molecular scissors this enzyme will cut the dna at specific sequence and when this is repaired by the cell a change or edit 
is made to that sequence so to put it simply it is nothing but editing the sequence or changing the sequence of dna as we said that it uses some tool to cut the dna this crispr cas9 is one of the gene editing tool this crispr cas9 tool will remove it can remove add or alter the dna sequence in the genome of higher organisms this tool will help us to target the exact genomic location and it will help us to potentially repair the broken gene here the name says crispr cas9 this, this cas9 which means crispr associated protein 9 this is the enzyme which is used to cut this dna this tool in this this crispr will scan the genome that means it will look for the right location where it has to be cut followed by which it will use its cas9 protein an enzyme that is the as molecular scissors to cut that dna when this cas9 cuts the target sequence the repair to that sequence will be done by replacing the original sequence with an altered version the next article is the gap within we need to address the issue of slower growth in our poorer states this article comes under gs paper 3 under the topic of economy from this article now we are going to see about what is meant by this fiscal responsibility and budget management act what is this frbm act it is the physical sector legislation it is a law that was enacted by the government of india in 2003 in order to ensure fiscal discipline for the center by setting some targets these targets include reduction of fiscal deficit we have already seen what is meant by fiscal deficit in our previous videos and elimination of here it is reduction of physical deficit and complete elimination of revenue deficit it is a legal step to ensure fiscal discipline and consolidation in the country now let us see what made it necessary for the government to enact this frbm act in 2003 one is rise in government borrowings and government debts these things have eroded the financial health of the government there is a high revenue deficit because there is higher expenditure on subsidies salaries defense etc which compelled the government to make huge borrowings from early 90s onwards with inadequate revenues government has resorted to this high level borrowing these borrowings have again produced higher interest payments because they have borrowed they have to pay the interest in this way interest payments have become the largest expenditure item of the government to address this financial weakness in its budget the government has taken some serious deficit cut targets by introducing a law in the form of this frbm act so what does this frbm say the frbm rule has set a target reduction of fiscal deficit to 3% of gdp by 2008 and 2009 this target will be achieved by an annual reduction target of 0.3% of gdp every year by the central government similarly revenue deficit has to be reduced by 0.5% of the gdp per year making sure there will be a complete elimination 
by 2089 that means it said that these targets has to be achieved in a phased manner these targets were reset and the budget 2016 and 17 has aimed to realize the 3% fiscal deficit target by march 2018 the targets that were set under this act were postponed several times in 2016 the government has set up a committee under nk singh to review this act the government believed that the targets were too rigid and the committee has recommended that the government should target a fiscal deficit of 3% of the gdp in the years up to march 31st 2020 and cut it to 2.8% in 2020 21 year financial year and to 2.5% by 2023 in budget 2017 the fiscal deficit target of 3% of gdp was chosen as a target of 3.2% citing the nk singh committee report whereas in the budget of 2018 the government didn't meet its fiscal deficit target of 3.2% due to several reasons like low gst collections and rise in oil prices and some other reasons the next article is moving away from 1% this article comes under gs paper 2 under the topic of governance and here the sub topic is issues related to health from this article we are going to see about a scheme known as pradhan mantri jan arogya yojana under the ambit of ayushman bharat this is one scheme that is pradhan mantri jan arogya yojana it aim to reduce the financial burden on poor and vulnerable groups due to the health expenditure out of pocket expenditure by the poor so to address that this program pradhan mantri jan arogya yojana will provide financial protection to 10.74 crore poor deprived rural families and identified occupational categories of urban worker families according to the socio economic caste census data and it will provide a benefit cover of 5 lakh rupees per family per year on a family float of basis that means this entire limit can be utilized by any person of the family this program will cover the medical and hospitalization expenses for almost all secondary and tertiary care procedures this is going to cover only secondary and tertiary care hospitalization but not the primary care this will be addressed by health and wellness centers because this ayushman bharat has two components one is health and wellness center which will focus on primary health care and the other one is pradhan mantri jan arogya yojana which will focus on secondary and tertiary hospitalization and the beneficiaries of this scheme will be identified based on the socio economic caste census data under this program in order to ensure that nobody is left out especially the girl child women children and the elderly there is no cap on the family size and age in this mission there is no age limit to acquire the benefits under this scheme and there is no limitation on the family size the scheme will be complete cashless and paperless at the public hospitals and the notified private hospitals not all private hospitals will provide these services only some empaneled which were listed under this scheme by the government will provide these benefits and the beneficiaries need not pay any charges for the hospitalization expenses the benefits will also include pre hospitalization and post hospitalization expenses and when this scheme is fully implemented according to the targets this program will become the world's largest government funded health protection mission 
द नेक्स्ट आर्टिकल इज मंकी फीवर केस कन्फर्म्ड इन वाई नाट दिस आर्टिकल कम्स अंडर जी एस पेपर थ्री अंडर द टॉपिक ऑफ साइंस फ्रॉम दिस आर्टिकल नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू सी अबाउट दिस क्याजनूर फॉरेस्ट डिसीज के एफ डी द अदर नेम ऑफ दिस इज मंकी फीवर दिस डिसीज विल गेट ट्रांसमिटेड टू ह्यूमन्स आफ्टर अ टिक बाइट हियर द वैक्टर्स ऑफ दिस डिसीज आर टिक्स these tick bite or contact with an infected animal most importantly a sick or recently dead monkey will transmit this disease they, and this is not a person to person transmitted disease large animals such as goats cows and sheep though they are infected with this kfd they play a very limited role in the transmission of this disease these animals will provide blood meals for ticks and it is possible for the infected animals to infect other ticks but transmission of this virus to humans from these large animals is rare and even this person to person transmission of this virus is not described this disease is caused by a kfd virus which belongs to a viral family that is responsible for yellow fever and dengue the main hosts the common hosts for this virus are rodents shrews and monkeys they are the common hosts for this virus after being bitten by an infected tick we can see here some of the symptoms here it will cause fever headache muscle pain vomiting gastrointestinal symptoms and bleeding there is no specific treatment for this virus but early hospitalization and supportive therapy is important we can prevent the spread of this virus through vaccination moreover additional preventive measures like using insect repellents and wearing protective clothes in areas where these ticks are endemic can prevent us from this disease The next article is Isro to launch military satellite tonight. This article comes under GS paper 3 under the topic of science and technology. From this article from the prelims point of view we should know the particulars of these PSLV C44 and this microsat R satellite. Today Isro is going to launch a student satellite called as Kalamsat and an imaging satellite known as microsat R. Using this PSLV C44 launch vehicle this vehicle will lift the satellites from Satish Dhawan Space Center of Sri Harikota the details about the configuration of this PSLV C44 were given here in detail this is the first time the launch vehicle is built in this configuration which is known as PSLV DL and it will carry only two strap on motors by the sides of first fuel stage at the bottom one of the specialities of this launch will be the configuration of this rocket after parking the satellites in the intended orbits the fourth stage of the rocket will be taken to a circular orbit in the space for carrying out certain experiments by the scientists Normally the fourth stage is kept deserted in space after injection of the satellites this time it will be kept live for carrying out some innovative studies the next article is cabinet gives not to set up gst appellate tribunal this article comes under gs paper 3 under the topic of economy from this article now we are going to see about this gst appellate tribunal gst AT The chapter 18 of the Central GST Goods and Service Tax Act has a provision for the appeal and review mechanism this has a provision for appeal and review mechanism in order to resolve the disputes under this GST regime section 109 of this chapter under the cgst act 
has given the responsibility to the union government to constitute an appellate tribunal based on the recommendations of gst council so it is a central government which should constitute a appellate tribunal with the recommendation of gst council this tribunal will hear the appeals against the orders that were passed by the appellate authority so as we are already having this appellate authorities which will give some orders so if the aggrieved person is not satisfied with these orders then they can appeal to this gst appellate tribunal for resolving the issue and if you see some of the facts it is the first common forum of dispute resolution between center and states being a common forum it will ensure there is uniformity in redressal that is solving the disputes that were arising under this gst goods and service tax and an implementation of gst in the country now let's see our today's prelims questions the first one is which among the following committee was established to review the frbm act and the other one is related to pradhan mantri jan arogya yojana try to answer these questions and post your answers in the comment box we'll see a detailed explanation for these questions in our tomorrow's video and this is our law excellence website where you can access the notes for this video and this is our official telegram channel where you can access all the other material and videos of law excellence is academy thank you